Hey everybody, I'm super excited to be back. Now we have been on a two week hiatus here at the Cozy Junk Studio, but we're back with upcycling these thrifted items. Now we're gonna be using some of the new 2024 spring IOD line that came out. If you don't have those products, that's okay. Grab some of your favorite products to use because we're gonna be doing some techniques that you're not gonna wanna miss. Also, I have some exciting news to share with you at the end of this video related to the mask making multiples videos we've been doing over the last couple of months. I wanna share with you what sold in my booth of March of 2024 from those videos and I am super excited about it because some of those items sold pretty quick. Now, if you want more information about that, go ahead and stay till the end of the video. Let's go ahead and get started with these upcycles. So I did purchase some of the release of the 2024 Spring IOD Edition. This is the Joie de Roses. It comes with eight sheets of beautiful vintage, very dreamy like images with muted colors. They are kind of cracked images, have that aged look to them. Now these roses and the images on here are very large. Uh, and grand but I did use them on a smaller piece and I want to show you how. Now I purchased this piece with a lot of that uh, wood fruit in it. I mean it was a huge bowl of wood fruit but I really want to make this over because I'm selling the fruit individually in my vendor booth because it definitely sells well and this had some very nasty stains. It had mold on it. I had to clean this really well and actually I cleaned it again once I pulled it back out of my stash. So I thought this would make a perfect base to use this transfer on. When I started out, I really wanted to mimic the sort of muted teals and blues in the background and even some grays of this transfer. Honestly, it did not turn out the color that I'd anticipated in my mind, but I actually love it and think that it really complements the, the colors in this transfers. Uh, you all have to let me know in the comments below. I was really um, focusing on this color right here, but my paint ended up way brighter and honestly, I just love how it turned out. I want to hear what you guys think about it. So for this project, I started out with some of my DIY Debbie's Design Diary paints in Bohemian, I think it's Bohemian Blue, Farm Fresh, and Apothecary. I do end up adding some Monet's Garden in here because once I started blending these, which I was just using my brush, starting with some of that navy, and then I was going to go in and use my sprayer and add some of those lighter greens, I thought that it needed some green to give it more of a darker teal base. And this is where it starts morphing into a color that I had not envisioned in my mind. So again, you guys will have to let me know what you think about it once it gets done. But I just go ahead and continue to take my brush, blending those colors together. I'm not trying to do a fade or ombre or anything like that here. I'm just, I don't want the colors to be solid and I want them to be blended. So to do that, I'm just picking some out of each container, going over each one and then using my Mr. Bottle in between. Now my Bohemian Blue and my Monet's Garden were very thick and I actually had added a lot of water to them. So, so it ended up making my Monet's Garden very thin, which was fine. That's why I'm going ahead and dipping in this container because there's not much left in it and what is left in it's very watered down. Normally this paint's really thick and I had to add water to it to reconstitute it, which is great. That's what I love about the clay paint. You can get it wet again if it gets hardened from just sitting from air. So I, that's why you're seeing me dip in here, even though I have blue and the other colors on my brush. What's funny is I had envisioned using those lighter colors, kind of like I started out. And then when I got the green on there, I just loved how it mixed in with that Bohemian Blue. And that's what I finished it with, not using those other colors. I, of course, just, you know, put them back in the container. But this color is so beautiful. So Monet's Garden and Bohemian Blue. But again, I did start out with some of the lighters, but those end up getting covered. You'll see coming up, I have a mistake that comes through but it makes this project perfect and I hope you all end up loving it as much as I do but you'll have to wait to see once this dries. I just go ahead and carry these colors around to the back of the bowl making sure I cover it really well. I'm not going to distress this back or pull any of that wood color back through. I just don't think it would look good. That wood is more of a yellowy 
um, not really orange, but more of a yellowy look. So I just didn't want to pull that back through by distressing this piece. Plus with the colors and the transfer, I just didn't feel like that was the look I was going for. Once this dried, I started adding a coat of my clear matte chalked finish. And you can see that the paint, uh, or not the paint, but the tannins from that wood or stains is coming through where it's already dried but wait till you see what it does after i dry this or after it dries on its own it's crazy how it comes through and shows the brush strokes on here i really think it works in my favor so here you're getting ready to see this is completely dry and look at the bleed through from the stains in that wood or maybe oils from a kitchen i'm not sure now the way to stop this is to go ahead and seal your piece with some type of clear coat and let that dry before you start on these projects um, any wood that's really dry or has been stained is has the possibility for this stuff to come through I didn't even think about it after I've done this for many years. I just went ahead and started. I love how this turned out. Love, love, love it. Again, you guys will have to let me know what you think. So I've just been kind of sizing up what I want to put on here while I was telling you a little bit about how to stop that bleed through. And I want to use this part that has the butterfly plus it kind of tails off to a point at the end, kind of like the bowl does. So I'm just picking a couple sheets in this transfer book that's going to fit this bowl and I do end up cutting down the second sheet and not using it as largely as this one. Another thing I wish I would have done is cut this down smaller and I do end up doing that but after I get it stuck on I wish I would have started in the middle of the bowl and worked my way back up the sides and I do that with the second piece but you know you all can learn from my mistakes. I don't hardly do concave in surfaces i do a lot of rounded surfaces again learn from my mistakes cut it down into smaller pieces start in the middle of this bowl and work your way up on the sides i'm not going to leave all of the footage of me doing this whole transfer but i will put in pieces for you to see kind of how the process works and how that i get it to uh, or into the placement that i want inside of this bowl uh, one thing I am no, am letting you know, and you can see this, I wanted to make sure my design came up on the edges of my bowl. I just think that gives it a little extra touch. You definitely don't have to do this. Um, or you can actually carry this down the outsides of the bowl as well. That's kind of a neat thing. So it's kind of like the, the design's dripping on the outer edge or down the sides of the bowl, which makes it even cooler. So this time I've just cut out a couple pieces that I think will finish this off and run down to that kind of point at the end of the bowl. And so I've actually cut a lot of the white off and around and then trimmed around that rose because we kind of have a stark, uh, not really line, but it's that wavy end that can connect with another wavy end. So we're just gonna blend that with these pieces. And I'm gonna start, like I said, down on the flat surface, working my way up the back or the side of the, the inside of the bowl. One thing I wanted to mention, if you've never worked with transfers, you are supposed to burnish these. Generally, you use the back side of this transfer piece, the clear plastic that comes off. But I have started using my hand to do it because I'm bad sometimes for not getting the transfer completely stuck down in certain places. And sometimes that plastic, if you do that too hard, it'll rip your transfer back up. So I've been pretty cautious and you all know I'm definitely not a cautious person but especially with transfers I get these comments all the time wow you handle those transfers just crazy you're definitely not delicate with them and and that's true I'm not it's it's not offensive at all but I'm not I mean you know yes they're expensive and I don't want to ruin them but I'm also I don't know y'all know how I am I'm just not crazy about being too careful I just Sometimes I'll peel the back off and just lay them down until I need them. And, you know, that's not things you're supposed to do. But in this sense, I am using my hand to kind of rub over these and get them completed because I'm afraid that plastic is going to rip my transfer off because I have done that more than once. What I'm doing now is just taking some scraps and filling in little gaps and going to fill in that large gap towards the end of the bowl to kind of finish this piece off. And what I end up doing after I do that is I just use some of the DIY 
Debbie's Design Diary clear wax to go over this whole piece. Even though I've already sealed it originally with that matte finish, I need to seal my transfer. This is going to be a display piece uh, not used for you know food or anything like that. You all will have to let me know if you love this piece, if it's your style, and if you would have just left that bleed through or would you have went back and sealed it and painted back to get more of a solid look. I definitely would not have ruined the masterpiece that I feel like that bleed through gave me. Now I know I'm always giving you all prices on things that I make. What would you price something like this to sell online or in your space that you sell in? Just curious. Put the comment in this uh, or the price in the comment section below and stay tuned till the end. We are going to be talking about what sold in my vendor booth out of those mask making videos we've done. Plus the last project has some specimen type curiosity to it. I think you guys are going to enjoy. These next uh, set of pieces is also something I've had in my own stash. The bowl was in there. I've had that quite some time as well as these and the piece coming up after this. Probably at least a year I've had these. So I thought we would just pull these out because I have this vision. I'm going to be using some of the new IOD products and we're going to be doing a new technique on here. I've not done on my channel. It's uh, not new to me, but it's new to you all. It may not be new to you all, but it's new technique that we've not done on here. First, I'm going to start. I took those pieces or the, the candle holder part off the glassware and now I'm just giving these a good coat of little black dress in the DIY Debbie's Design Diary paint. I'm going to give that a good coat, if not two, and let that dry. I had this vision for these two pieces that I wanted them to be very, very dark, but I also wanted some red and some gold. So I knew this Collage de Fleur, which is part of the new 2024 Springline IOD transfers would work perfect. So I grabbed a couple roses and out of the roses, one of them was a little darker than the other, but they definitely complement each other. But before we do that, we're going to be using this IOD new 2024 spring line veranda stamp. This thing is quite gorgeous. Now, I forgot to show you the stamp in person, so I'm just going to insert some pictures here. If you want any of these products, uh, my affiliate, Aunt Bee's Attic, Beth is wonderful. Go on over to her, AuntBee'sAttic.com, and order these. I'll have the link in the description box below. I do get a small percentage, but her prices, does that does not reflect in her prices for you. They're actually cheaper than most of the other websites, and she has $9 flat rate shipping. If you use my link, every time you order, I do get a small percentage to help pay for these uh, items that I'm showing you on here. So the first thing we're going to do is use IOD ink in the color black. You can use any color of ink. You can use any kind of ink. I'm going to stamp this on there and I'm going to do both of these, the backs, with this black. Now you could just stop here and this looks gorgeous. I loved it. I almost was like, wow, because it's actually darker than my black paint, which gives it this sort of shadow effect. But what I'm going to do is take these gold leaf pa papers and at first I just pull them off and start laying them down and then I kind of get smart and take the whole pe the whole paper and slap it down on top of there. And you're just going to kind of rub those in and I, you're going to take a piece of nonstick either parchment paper or whatever the piece that they came on. What you're going to be doing is actually smoothing these down and getting them embedded in that ink. You want them to stick to it. So if you use something to lay down over top of the gold leafing and just smooth over that's what's going to happen. Now you'll see here I am taking, and this is um, definitely in real time. I wanted you guys to see exactly how I was doing this. You're just rubbing it over that and you're going to pull that paper up. And uh, I do end up, I think, taking a piece and going back over those pieces that I tried to use smaller. I just tried to break it up because to be honest, this makes a big mess. I'm just going to tell you, I had this gold stuff everywhere. Was it worth it? Yes. Is there a better way to do it without getting it everywhere? I'm sure there is. I definitely need to work on that. It's been a while since I've done something like this, but once I get all of the ink covered, I'm going to start taking a stencil brush and just brushing off the excess that's not stuck down. Now, if you notice that it's not sticking to your ink, leave it on a little bit longer because I promise you it will stick to the ink. 
I just take that brush and I go over this to get all of the excess gold off. It's not going to stick to the project except for where the ink's at. With, I'll say that with a grain of salt, it does leave a little bit behind, but not much. I take a dry washcloth and just kind of go over it and brush the rest of that excess off. If you don't like this bright gold, you definitely can do some antiquing glaze or wax over this, but I decided that I loved it. I'm just going to add these roses on each corner, kind of having them come off the edge. I'm going to use my little transfer tool and do my burnishing. I just think these are so gorgeous. Once I got both of these roses on there, and then of course I burnished them, I think I end up using some of that same clear wax to go over the, it was either the clear wax or it was the matte uh, coat finish. I love that chalked matte finish. Uh, sealer that I use. I'll try to have that linked in the description box below because I do get a lot of questions about that. But once we do this, it's like, wow, how can this piece get any better? But just wait, we're not finished yet. So these are the glasses that came off or the candle holders or whatever you want to call them. So I thought that we needed to add some gold to the rims of that. It's like a wrought iron kind of around the rims of them. So we're just going to use some uh, antique gold rub and buff. And this is going to complement the gold on the back or behind our roses. Now, like I said, you can tone down that gold to give it more of this look with a dark wax. But I chose to leave mine the brighter gold uh, where the stamping was. Now, you could definitely leave these at this point, but I told you we were going to be adding something even more. So we're going to be using this specimen mold that was part of the spring 2024 release. I'm going to be using some DAS clay to make two of the same insect to put on the glass. Now, I know a lot of people think bugs and insects are part of like a Halloween type thing, but I look at them more as educational type thing that's kind of mixed in with decor, especially in the dark academia and dark and moody genre. I hear a lot of people say, oh, those would be really cute for a boy's room or oh, those would be really neat at Halloween. I don't look at it like that personally, but I love the old um, specimens that you can get where they actually had the real live insects and they would label them and pin them. It's more of an entomology and an educational thing and just for the love of nature. So if you can look at it like that, then that might be something that, you know, maybe more of, of a, your style versus just for a boy or a boy's room or just for Halloween. When I hear those comments, I'm always like, hmm, that's not really, I don't look at it like that way. There's nothing wrong with that for sure. I mean, definitely, you know, some, I mean, my boys never played with bugs. Not that they wouldn't, but it's not just a boy thing in my mind. It's definitely uh, more of a any one thing, especially if you like that kind of stuff. And I definitely do. I like the darker side of things. So for me, this glam and these dark roses, which give a vintage vibe with this veranda stamp. And then just having these insects on the outside of the candle holder. It totally pulls this package together in such a unique way and decor item. For me, that's what I love. That's why I like doing upcycles and thrift flips is to get a style that you're not just going to find anywhere or see done anywhere. So basically, I just added those back with the screws on the back. And now we're going to take more of that rub and buff and go over these to highlight them and give them a majestic look to tie in with our gold already on this piece. Now you all that will have to let me know what you think about these pieces. Also, do you like insects? If you don't, that's okay. I totally understand it. There's definitely some things in, that, in nature that creeps me out and grosses me out. So I truly understand. Our next piece was actually a, an award given to someone locally and it had a gold plaque on it and I think it was meant for golf balls because it was some type of golfing tournament. So I took the gold plaque off, which was really small. I'm not sure why it was on the back of this very large thing. And then I gave it a good coat of the DIY black paint that I've been using. Now I am going to add this DIY crinoline and some of the white swan paint to the kind of the whole area of this but leave a little bit of the black as a kind of a halo and I'm going to go ahead and mix this kind of in together and I'm using just a piece of foam that came out of some type of packaging 
but this was a solid wood color just a dark stain and I painted it black but I'd painted it black a while back so that's why I couldn't show you for this video I'd started it for a different project and then just didn't end up using it so it went back on the shelf now it's back off of the shelf so once I get a couple of these coats painted and I want them, I want it kind of mixed like a mottled color where you can see some of each color. Then we're gonna let that dry and I'm going to seal it with that matte clear coat that I've been using. I've already sealed the black with a matte clear coat because it was the DIY clay paint. You know you have to seal that. I end up taking a little brush to kind of finish this off the way that I want the pattern to go on it. And I do end up going back with a little bit of black paint to round off the corners down at the bottom. You'll see that um, change coming up. But once I get this the way I want it, this has to thoroughly dry, be sealed and thoroughly dry. And then we're gonna start with the next step. The next step we're gonna be doing is using the IOD new 2024 spring pastiche stamp. And I forgot to show the whole stamp, so I'm gonna show you the photos of it right here. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this is my favorite piece that they brought out other than the insect mold. I love this stamp. I jumped ahead and got one of the cloches stamped before I started recording, but that's okay. You're gonna see plenty of stamping coming up. Basically, I'm using the IOD black ink and I'm using these stamps to make sort of a scene on this large area. I'm gonna use the its mask to cover it up because the next cloche or bird cage that I'm using, I want it to be behind this one. And to do that, I have to put the mask on this one. I'm just gonna ink my stamp up really well, going over it several times to get it covered with the ink. And then I'm gonna place the stamp on top of the area that I want it on along with the mask that's there. It's not gonna hurt that mask. I can clean that off as soon as I remove the stamp from it. I'm gonna use my hands to kind of go all over it. And sometimes I use my Mod Podge roller to help kind of roll over it. You just don't wanna smash down too hard because that can blur your stamp, especially if you're rollering over it very hard. You don't wanna press down really hard with that roller. Just be real careful not to um, smash your stamp. Now I have a light stamping here, but it's okay. I go ahead and finish my scene and then I go back and remask everything and stamp it again because Doing my other stamps, they end up dark, some of them darker, and I just don't like the difference in the darkness. So I go back and restamp things if I feel like they need to be a little bit of darker. Also using my uh, little heat tool in between to help dry them before I lay my mask on top of them. Now you'll notice here when I get ready to stamp my watch, I realize that it's going to look like I stamped over my cloche. So I'm grabbing the bottom piece and putting that there so that once I stamp my watch, it looks like the watch is inside of the cloche. I do spray and clean my stamps every time in between all stamping. I just don't like to leave the ink on there. Although it doesn't get 100% off of there, I do clean them and I clean the masks off after every stamping as well. Now coming up, I'm gonna show you where I made a mistake. I Well, I grabbed the bottom and covered this because I again I want my stamping to look like it is inside of the cloche and if you stamp on top of the cloche that's it's not going to look like that so I use those bottoms and then I put my books down which my book should have came after the nest that's going on top of here so what I did was I just painted over the very top of the books and then went back with my nest and it really just fixed it it, it was not that big of a mistake but pre-stamping definitely fixes this, and I think I just misread my pre-stamping. So a couple of things. One, I absolutely love that they have colored these stamps that you'll see coming up, and I love that the masks have the design on them because you can use them to lay down and see what your stamping is gonna look like before you even stamp. So way to go, IOD. I also want to let you know, I saw a lady, and I wish I had her name, and I'm so sorry. I'll try to link it in the description box below, but she took stays on ink, which stays on is permanent. It doesn't rub off. Now, IOD stamp is permanent, but it takes a while to dry. Stays on dries almost immediately. Uh, normally, it does. But anyways, she stamped all of her old masks, and they look just like these. So if you want your masks that you have previously from IOD to have the pattern, just stamp them with some stays on black ink and voila. When I get time, I'm gonna do mine like that. Another thing I kind of noticed when stamping with masks, sometimes you'll have a gap 
between the two areas. So I'll just go back in with my stamp and kind of smudge a little bit to make them not look like there's a broken gap with no ink on there. After I do the feathers, I go ahead and put the insect uh, stamp on here, finish that part off, and then we're going to use one of the new IOD label sets. Now, this is definitely something that would be awesome to have in your arsenal of supplies. So now what I'm going to do is use one of the kind of ornate labels to go on the top of this piece. We're going to use the letters, uh, a very small font set to stamp the word specimen. Now I'm going to show you coming up how I use the smallest stamp or the smallest letters and I don't stamp them all together like you can. I stamp them singularly because sometimes stamps can have an edge that makes your letters be farther apart and they will not fit what you are trying to get them into. So I'm just showing you here, you could actually put these all together on to a piece of, of plastic or you know backing to put to stamp the word all at one time. But like I said, I'm not doing that and that's why they were crooked. I wanted to show you here, there's space around there that I need to get the word specimen inside of my label. So I'm just gonna show you, I do a couple and show you how that I do them one at a time and I'm able to get them really close together to get that word specimens inside of this label. So for the next step of this, I really wanted to put something either inside of those little um, slots down at the bottom or on the window and I decided that I would just put some things on the window so whomever purchases this can use the bottom for storage or display things that they really enjoy looking at. So I grabbed some of my IOD Mio's pages with the florals and I'm just going to cut some of these out and put it on the glass of the bottom door of this piece. So I just want to let you all know that I really really struggled with this piece. First of all I struggled with trying to envision what should go on here because it was such a long topper on this and I struggled with getting through the stamping. Of course, you know, our family's been through a lot over the last couple of weeks, so that probably is part of it, but I just couldn't wait till this project was done. I hope you guys love it. I do like how it turns out, but I'm gonna tell you it's not my favorite piece from all of these. My favorite piece is definitely those sconces and then the bowl. This would probably be my third favorite piece. And I don't know if it's because of how much I struggled to get it done or all the things that was happening you know, when I first started this, and I didn't go back to this piece until right before I edited this video, and it was after things had calmed down with our family, but again, I just want to let y'all know that I do struggle to get videos done, I struggle to make projects, I struggle to get projects completed, I struggle to get my visions from my head to my projects, you're not alone, but I just want to tell you, keep going, I keep going, and when I do finish a project or I just complete anything it makes me feel so much better and then it gives me energy and inspiration to move on to something else now do I ever take a project and just quit it and put it back on the shelf of course and that's how this piece started out I painted it black and then I couldn't get any further so please use this as something that you know that even as YouTube creators or people that maybe you see wow look at what they're making and I'm not talking about me because you know there are people that can make beautiful things out there and I look at it and think, wow, you know, I hope to be to that level someday. Um, but there are people that struggle even though they do produce things that look good and that seems like, oh, look how easy that was for them to make. No, it's not, it's not always the case. Sometimes it is, absolutely. Sometimes I do make projects and a lot of the times I make projects be like, wow, that was pretty quick or that came out so great and I am able to finish it really easy, but there are struggles. So, you know, again, just keep that in mind. Now, what I'm doing here is adding just some more of that uh, paint that we used in the beginning. I'm using the crinoline and DIY paint to just trim this out because I knew we needed something to tie in that cream color, and this just did that. I think that it absolutely finished this piece off, but we have one more step coming up. The original color on this knob is a bright gold, so we're going to add some antique gold rub and buff to it and a few areas on this piece to tie in that gold knob. Now you all will have to let me know what you think about this project and I'm getting ready to come up and go over some of those numbers with you from the mass making multiples. So I will see you in just a minute.
So if you guys remember, we made two sets of paper clips and we just added washi tape and we added decoupage paper to one set of them. So those sold within a few days. I even brought my tickets to show you that they had sold. I think it's really important to have concrete evidence to back up things that have sold because it lets people know that it's truthful, it's honest, and that you can rely on the information. So here's one of the tickets. And it was the one that we had put on the vintage music card. Also those handmade bookmarks that we made, All of them have sold but one. We didn't sew around them, we just glued around them. I started mine out at $3.95 a piece because I didn't know if they were gonna sell. So I started them out a little bit low to see kinda how they would sell and how quick they would sell. Well, they sold pretty quick, so that means I can charge more for those and maybe sit on them a little longer. It really just depends how long you wanna sit on things. So I may have sold three to the same person, I'm not sure, but the tickets are back to back, three of them. So if you look here, Bookmark 395, bookmark 395, hand, well, handmade bookmark 395. So those three are together. All right, my cutting boards, I did the same way. I started them out at $3.25 a piece and almost all of my cutting boards have sold. And here's one of the tickets from them. Remember the Raven art print that I put in that eight by 10 frame and I think I had a total of $3 in it. I marked it for $12.95 and I went back two days later and it was gone. So I don't know if it sold the next day or two days later. And remember the Edgar Allan Poe, I told you guys that always sells. So here is the Edgar Allan Poe. It's, that one sold for $10.95. I think it was a, one of the four by sixes or maybe five by sevens that we made. Here is another Edgar Allan Poe that sold for $10.95 as well. I don't know if we made two of them or I just had extra ones in my stock. We also framed one of those owl Timu prints and that sold as well. And that one's sold for $13.95. Also, remember those towels that we stamped? And I was like, these towels are horrible. They're so thin. I really didn't know what kind of towels they were. You all definitely let me know. That's how they're supposed to be. I only put two of those in my booth. We only stamped three because I was so frustrated with them. And the two that I put in my booth sold within days. I only put $3.95 on them because I wasn't sure they were even gonna sell. Here is the stamped bird towel and it sold for $3.95. And there is the stamped bunny. I think a 10 pack of those is like $8. So even if I only charge $3.95, that's still a lot of money to be made per towel at $4 considering I already have the stamps and I already have the ink. So that's definitely something I wanna move forward and do more of and maybe not get so frustrated. Now I know that that's how they're supposed to be and that's something that people will enjoy. I also sold several of those mini rolling pins that we did. I put $3.95 a piece on them and they've pretty much all sold. Here is a couple of the tickets. Now, I hope sharing this information with you will help you keep going and give you more inspiration to make these smaller items just to have to sell and cover those booth costs or maybe those platform selling fees so that if you love making furniture over or you love larger pieces that take longer to sell, selling the smalls can cover that booth rent until you sell those larger pieces. So I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging in and waiting on this video. One of my adult sons had a minor surgery or what was supposed to be a minor surgery that had some post-op complications. And although I am a registered nurse and was able to do a lot for him, we still had to depend on medical professionals to help him to get through that. 
that. He is much better now and I am back and ready to get going. So thank you so much for all of your thoughts and prayers and I will see you all in the next video.